Hey, 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 everyone. It is Andrea Maxim with the Profitable Practice Podcast. Of course, your hostess with the mostest today. And I wanted to bring on another person to talk specifically about copywriting on this show. And I'll tell you why this was so important to me. I've had a lot of um, previous shows with other people talking about copywriting. And the reason why I keep hammering it is because it really is kind of the lifeblood of anything you want to do in your business. So if your goal is to write emails and engage your audience and grow a bigger list, if your goal is to create landing pages and online programs or offline programs and you want to sell them, you need to be able to communicate with your audience in such a way that they number one start to put up their hand and say I'm interested and once you get them interested and you can start linking them to you know your sales page or your online shopping cart or to supplements that you're selling that's when you really start to get rid of a lot of those objections and you get to overcome a lot of the um the selling and the asking and the telling and the repeating yourself because you've um, written your products out in such a way that they would be crazy not to take you up on that offer if it's an offer that is directly written out to them. So in my previous shows that I've had, and I'll list a bunch of what they are in the sales copy, um, sorry, in the show notes, um, you know, we talk about this and we talk about Uh, how to take away the fear of writing. And that's a big thing that I find even personally, it's sort of like you sit at your computer and you have no idea what to write. You don't have that, um, that clarity of what you're going to talk about or or what information you're going to put out to the social media or your groups or things like that and this show really broke it down so easily and I'm so glad that we had Ben Settle who is my guest today on the show because number one he's captivating just to listen to and um, for those women that are listening to the show and I complimented him afterwards telling him straight up that I'm a married woman but I did do a video of this show and he was also very nice to look at he has probably the most beautiful green eyes I've ever seen so anyways there's just a little extra incentive to watch the video portion of this podcast Um, but he did a you know a really really great job of breaking down literally the five steps that you need to create good sales copy and get people doing what you want them to do And one of my favorite parts of the episode or of the interview, I should say, is, you know, and this is something that has been said before, is it is a disservice for you and your business and your patients to not tell them what you have to offer them. And if you're afraid of selling, if you're afraid of showing them the products and the services that you have, you are taking away their ability to make an informed decision. And it doesn't mean you have to be a sneaky, pushy, awful salesperson to get them to do that but you do need to show them what they have at their disposal and this could be something you do with your um, all of your initial patients like I do I have a welcome to the office booklet and in that booklet I have postcards and rat cards of all the extra services that I have and I just very simply say you know if this If you need extra help with meal planning, here is a service that we offer that's all about meal plans. We have an associate now who does live blood and I promote my live blood analyst with every new patient. Like they just need to know what's available to them and not to be afraid of repeating what you have to offer them and just continuously, very gently letting them know. And these are just the things that I find we're just not doing very well as an industry and we're just so afraid or we just get so nervous that we're just like buy this you know buy this supplement for me this is what you need and we don't take the time to explain to them why and really paint that picture so 
if copywriting is something that really you really want to get better at, um, Ben really breaks it down in such a way that I think just about any of us could write amazing copy. And of course, as I'm listening to him, I'm thinking of all the different ways that I can upgrade my emails and my website and the way I do my videos. And I think this is something, this is just one of those shows that made a huge impact with me. And I think it's going to be incredibly, incredibly valuable for you. Um, The other thing that I just want to point out is I have been doing a number of different certifications. I I don't know if you've ever heard of Digital Marketer. That's Ryan Dice who runs that company. And I have just learned so much about how to properly engage with your audience on social media. And one of the big pitfalls that I know I've been doing is using social media to get people to buy things. And that's really not what this is about. And we talk about this at the end of the interview as well, is you really want to use all of your social media tactics to drive people onto your list or onto your website. And then when you get people onto your website, you can at least start tracking them through the Facebook ad pixels. And that costs you zero, zero dollars to start tracking leads that are coming onto your website. And um, this is where you uh, should go to Ben Blackman's part two of the Facebook ad trainings podcast that we just did a few weeks ago. And, you know, just driving people off of social media onto your website to at least start to create that lookalike audience is huge. But then of course, once they get to your website, telling them exactly what to do, and that is to capture their email. And then of course, nurture them in such a way that they will want to come into your office and become a patient or buy a service or product that you're selling. So really, really pay attention to this episode. And if there is any ways um, that I can be of value to you in what I've learned and become certified in, when it comes to email marketing, I mean, I'd love to chat. But before we jump into the interview, I always like to just point to the fact that the show has been sponsored by the seven day detox program, which is my signature program I created with actually my patients in my office and then bundled it all up for you because it has been a game changing program for me and my practice. It is um, basically, you know, completely turnkey. You can uh, set it all up, I think in 24 hours. And what it does is it gives you a signature program that you can really help deliver fast, results, quick wins. And for me, it has been phenomenal at really converting my initial patients into lifelong patients because they get such a tremendous benefit from going through the detox program. They lose weight, their their digestive symptoms are gone, their menopausal symptoms are gone by the end of it. They're identifying their food sensitivities and only in one week of working with me. So it is a huge, huge game changer for um, the relationship that I build with my patients. So I've put that together for you. It's on the website, maximize business.ca forward slash seven, the number seven day detox program. But let's jump into the interview with Ben. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for being on the Profitable Practice podcast with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, for those people that don't necessarily know who you are, why don't you give us a bit of a background into you, how you got into the whole copywriting email scene and all that stuff. Okay, I'll try to too long didn't read this because it's kind of a long story, but I started out like around 1998, I just graduated college and I started and where a lot of people start in business in MLM, which is kind of like the gateway drug to business. I mean, like that everybody's, like. Kind of, yeah, you know, and you were telling me like, you know, the audiences and the, the health field and all that, it was for like a nutritional company. So I, I'm very familiar with that sort of thing. Uh, I joined it. I proceeded to be like the worst MLM person that ever walked the face of the planet. I just, uh, you know, I'm a very introverted guy. I don't really want to go do what they want you to do, which is like go up to everybody within three feet and ask them if they keep their options open for ways to make money. It's like, it's just, it's not me. So I, for a couple of years, I got in a lot of debt, made a lot of mistakes, uh, ended up living in an office because I couldn't really afford like a real place to live. And something had to change, and one day I just realized, okay, this isn't working. It took me a while to figure this out. And I kind of stumbled into the world of copywriting. Now, at the time, I didn't know what copywriting was, okay? So 
anyone listening, if you don't know what it is, that's fine. A lot of people don't. When people hear copyright, they think that that little copyright sig signal at the bottom. Yeah, of, uh, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I didn't know. But I stumbled into it. And what it is, is it's basically writing. It could be a sales letter. It could be a video. It could be an audio like what we're doing now. It could be anything where you were trying to persuade somebody to take some kind of action, usually by um, via that way instead of face-to-face -face or on the phone or whatever. So it's selling in print. That's what the old school advertisers are called. And I've been doing that since 2002, so it's about 15 years now. Around 2008, I started focusing on email specifically. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I think email is one of the most powerful ways you can sell it. But uh, you know, I've done many markets. I've, I've sold in many markets, including some health markets and all that. So hopefully I have a few things worth hearing. And uh, we'll see what happens. Now, I find in our industry and when my coaching clients send me their original draft of either an email or a poster or some sort of landing page that they've created, a landing page, again, is kind of like a sales page, something to engage people to take action. I find that our version of copywriting is not what actually gets people to do things. So most of the time when we're writing our copy, it's, all about what the program offers. So please sign up for my free three-day juicing challenge. You're going to get a recipe. You're going to get an email from me every day. You're going to get this, this, and this. Where, and, I, and I'm going to kind of put you on the spot, if I That's were to fine. propose that to you, what would you say are the first common mistakes that I've made in presenting copy in the, um, in the, the way, shape, or form of this is the program, not necessarily why they should buy into the program or opt okay. in or whatever. Okay, so what it really comes, and this is across the board, not just for doctors, but I don't care what you're selling. It doesn't matter what it is. <clears throat> the difference between people who write boring copy and those who don't is not has nothing to do with writing ability. So this is good news for everybody. You don't have to be a great writer. I'm not a great writer. I'm the first to admit it. But you have to know how to create vision. This is everything. The late great master of negotiations, his name is Jim Camp. He was world. He was known as the world's most feared negotiator. He's, he says vision drives decision, and what that means, until somebody has a vision and they're emotionally connected to it, they won't make a decision. They they you can't. Even, they really can't make a decision. In fact, all decisions are made on emotion. Even people who think they're making their decisions based on rationality, that's an emotional thing. So it's all emotion. So. Well, I'll give an example from the email world, and this would apply to anything. I don't care if you're talking on social media. I don't care if you're writing a letter to your list, like in paper. I don't care if you're talking to them face to face. Here's an example, and this is an example because one of the markets I've sold in is people have prostate problems, and I was selling some eBooks that use natural ways of dealing with the problem. So I wouldn't go in talking about you know this is herb or anything like that, or I wouldn't talk about like the, the cure. I'm talking about the problem. So I'll talk about, for example, terp surgery. Now, you probably know what it is. Anyone who knows what it is, it's a very gruesome thing. And I would write an email detailing how gruesome the surgery is. Now, they can, if they want that surgery, that's up to them. If they want to find some ways of supporting their prostate naturally and maybe avoid such a thing, check out this link. Mm -hmm. By the time they go to that link, they're ready to buy some. I mean, I've had people squirming in their chairs reading these emails. And, uh, you know, the, the beauty of the health world is that it's so easy. Like, there's so many problems you can solve. I, I mean, any symptom is, is an email or a sales letter or a product, whatever. Every symptom, you can just tell a story about it. Even like weight loss, or some, for example. I've sold a lot in weight loss. and We did really well on that. Now, I'm not an overweight woman, right? So it's hard for me to get in their in their minds, right, and really do that. So I would study what overweight women who were really struggling with this problem really wanted to fix it. I would go like read forums online where they're talking to each other, where they think it's private. In a way, it's anonymous, but you know, anybody can see it. And they will say things they will never say probably to their doctor, right? And so, for example, I saw this one forum where – Somebody was, was this lady who was really trying really hard to lose weight. She's, I mean, she's eating right, she's exercising, she's doing everything right. But she had friends on Facebook who were t purposely tagging her heavy pictures to kind of keep her down. Oh, I know, right? It makes you, <laughs> but that was a vision. So I wrote an email about that. Mm -hmm. I said, I heard about this person who had this problem. Her friends were passive aggressively trying to keep her like crabs in a bucket, right? When crabs are in a bucket, one tries to climb out, the other pull it back in. 
And I just wrote an email about that. I created this vision of this problem. I didn't even talk about the product until like maybe two seconds, like two sentences at the mm -hmm. end. Was, if you want a way to help with this, check out this product. Now they're ready to read the, the facts and all that mm -hmm. and all that. But you got to build that vision first. If you build that vision of the problem and the pain, it, it's very, very, it, it's so easy after that. They are looking for a solution. But if you come in pitching the solution right off the bat, they're like, all you're doing is creating objections. Like, why yeah. should, why are you the best? Why is this so? So that, I hope that that's clear, but that's one very simple way to do it. And I actually want to take a step back because this is something um, that everybody can do. And I've definitely um, put this into my courses and I've talked to my clients about this is if you don't know how to talk to your audience, you're not really going to get very far with them. And you set that stage up so perfectly. You're like, I am not a woman, first and foremost. I am not an overweight woman, secondly. And I'm trying to talk to overweight women that want to lose weight. And the best way for you to hear their concerns, hear their pain, is to, I think, kind of be a fly on the wall and watch these forums. Now, other examples that I've given are joining Facebook groups of where your target audience is and just seeing the threads that come up and seeing how people are explaining their stories and things like that. Do you have other techniques that you've used to get into the heads of your target audience and they're not necessarily even for you, right? I'm assuming you're writing these copies for your clients. So if I say, okay, I want to talk to somebody who's having issues with um, let's just say fertility, because fertility is such a big topic. You know, what are the steps that you would take to really get into their heads? Well, I mean, okay, so there's forums, there's the Facebook groups. Um, I'm going to give an example. Well, the beauty of these places is it's not only do you get to hear about the problem, but how they describe the problem, which is a mm -hmm. huge difference between what most, like most people who sell to a, a market don't really know how to, they're not using the language. So this is not a health example, but I hope this, this will get the point across. Because anyone who uses this Facebook group can do what I'm about to say. So another market I sell in is to golfers. Now, golfers are a very rabid market. In fact, I would I would assume that many of everyone listening to this clients probably play golf. <laughs> and um and that's great. Yeah, you know, that's those those are good people to sell to. So I we were doing some market research before I wrote a long form sales letter for this this company. I, I enjoy venturing this thing. And I, I play golfer. I'm not a rabid golfer. I'm not, I don't speak the language of golfers. I, I'm really the worst. I'm like, I'm, I'm probably worse at golf than I'm at MLM. You know, it's like, I'm just not that <laughs> fun. It's like, and so I, I, I went, we have a Facebook group of about 40 or 50,000 people of golfers. And I, what I did is I wrote out what they call a USP, which is a unique selling proposition. What is it that I can offer that any competition either is not willing to do or can't? So I came up with this idea of, yeah, you know, I, I said, and I went to the group and I said, okay, and I didn't tell them I was pitching anything. I said, imagine somebody showed up at your door, knocked on your door and said, okay, X, Y, Z, or USP, like we, whatever it is. What would you, what would be the first thing you thought? And so we got a whole bunch of replies. And the one thing I, I found out was how skeptical the market was, which is, yeah, you should always assume everyone's skeptical. Yeah. They just, they don't believe it. But the most important thing was this, one person said, Word for word, I would think the golf god, either the golf god has arrived or this is a complete scam. Now, th there's something interesting about this, and anybody listening to this can do what I did here. He wrote, that person wrote my headline for me. Mm -hmm. I could never have thought of that. I, and I've been copywriting for 15 years. I could never have thought of that as a headline. I just took his words and his language, someone in the market, which combines, you know, it showed how skeptical they are, and it was an interesting, like, little thought. Put that as a headline. And you could do this in any type of marketing. And that ad was, I don't know, I don't want to get too vernacular here, like too jargony, but basically it was one of the most profitable ads in the golf space that the people wow. I worked with seen. It wasn't because I wrote it. I'm not a genius. I simply was looking at what does the market think? Let them tell you what the problem is. Let them explain to you how they feel and think about it. Use their words in your marketing so you really do show that you do understand. You're not just kind of writing them off. Well, I have the answer. Mm -hmm. But even if you do, they don't want to think that, right? They want to think that. So that's an example that anybody with a Facebook group could do what I just did. And you will get a, they will write your copy for you. Mm -hmm. It's so easy.
And I've heard that from so many people where they will offer um, surveys, they will um, email to their list and, and have an open-ended question, and based on all the responses they get, they compile them all and then put them into exactly word-for-word -word their copy. So that's a wonderful, wonderful way of putting it together. But now let's take the next step, and this is about writing. And so this is another thing I've heard from clients is, I'm just not creative enough. That's what one of the people that I was talking to said. She's like, I'm just not creative enough. I don't know how to even start. I know that I should be doing this, but I don't even know how to get writing, how to create a, a decent email or sales page. So how could we overcome some of those fears of writing something down or putting things together where it's not so much put on my onus to put it together properly, but kind of piecemealing, as you said, like information you've collected from different groups or forums. So how do you go about now with the writing process? Okay, so here's the good news, you, and I've said this before, you don't have to be a creative writer. Like, there's nothing creative about the headline I just explained. Like, I did not make that up. In fact, the, the weight loss email I told you, I didn't, that wasn't from my brain. That was from their brain. Mm -hmm. For a sales letter, and I'll just, yeah, because this is the thing that people have the most problem with. Um, I'm going to give a very simple five-step structure I use and have used for many, many years. It has worked very well, and it's so simple that other copywriters accuse me of being too simple. Mm. But that's the way I like to do things. I like to keep it, and it'll work for anybody. So if you're anyone listening to this, if you want to write a sales letter, a sales page, but you could also put this with anything else, like video or anything else, there's a headline, opening sentence, tell a story about someone with the problem, then bullets, which is kind of where you just kind of list all the benefits and stuff, and then close it, close it up. You know, here's how to order. Is this going to make you, you know, an A-list copywriter? Just no, but it'll help. It keeps people on track. Mm -hmm. And if you use that very simple structure, that is 90% of the battle. But the most important part of that structure would be the story. Everybody can tell stories, and, and, and stories will do so much selling. It, it's amazing to me. Like, there are people can take thousand-dollar seminars on how to tell stories, which makes no sense because as kids, we just told stories naturally. We didn't worry about the seven different kinds of plots or, you know, the hero's journey or any of this stuff. I don't even know what that stuff means. I just know <laughs> how to tell. This is what happened, okay? There is a person. He's suffering from – I'm just using the market. I, I'm, I'm familiar. Mm -hmm. This person's suffering from prostate problems. He can't pee. <laughs> He's getting up nine times a night. He's not sleeping. He actually got pulled – and this was actually a real story. He got pulled over by a cop on the way to work because he fell asleep on his way to work because he's not sleeping at night. He almost got arrested because of his prostate problems. He's, he can't have sex. I mean, it hurts. He feels pain. Mm -hmm. His wife's starting to get annoyed with him. And she's, trying, she's worried about him. He, he can't eat anything. He can't, or he can't drink any alcohol at all like, without it just hurting. He has to sit at home with, a, with, a, with a, a heating pad between his legs all day or sit in a hot bath all day. And he's taking all these days off of work. He's miserable. He's worried he might have to go get some surgery done or take some drugs that are going to cause – drop in blood pressure and dizziness and all these things. And even if he does take these things, this, the, the potential side effects are worse than the problem. This guy's miserable. And then, he, you know, I got to talking to him, and I suggested he do this one thing. Okay, whatever it is. You don't might necessarily give this away. And mm -hmm. I told him to do this one thing. It has to do with how much water he drinks and the kind of water he drinks. A few weeks later, he told me he saw a massive improvement. And then it didn't care everything, but he's just feeling better. We've, we realized his problem was not because he didn't, because he's devoid of Flomax or whatever. You know, it wasn't. It's like it's like you don't get a headache because you didn't take because you don't have a right. um, aspirin deficiency. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it, it, it isn't that prostate problems? He has a Flomax deficiency. And and then we found out there's there's some some other things he could do, and he combined these together, and he's doing really good. And I explain this in this product, or I explain this when people come in for a consultation or they come for an appointment. It could be as simple as that. And you could, what I just did is give you a structure for anything you want to solve for any problem, as long as it's you know health based. So hopefully right. that helps. Yeah, and I think everybody who's listening has a case study of a patient that they've treated that they could easily put into a vision statement, just like you did, and at the very end say, "I did this with her. Check it out here." And then there's some. Yeah, very simple and very effective. Even I'm visualizing this person, and even I want to know what you did. <laughs> like, I want to opt into the product. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I, oh, I, I've, I've let people read the, the sales letter for this product who are in their 20s. They don't have prostate problems, mm -hmm. right? They, you just, you know they don't. 
And they're sitting there saying, I think I had this problem. <laughs> and, and so they're wanting to buy a product. I and mean, I'm not trying to sell it to them. I, you know, they were friends of mine. It's the power of copy. It is. It's, it's like any, it, it, that's the beauty of the health market. It's like the, the problem with the health market is you got to be real careful what you claim. But the beauty of it is you don't have to make any claims. I, my email, when I talk about TERP surgery, I'm not making a single claim. I'm simply saying what happens people have TERP surgery. You know, and now they're in a state where they're like, God, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. What do you got? You know, and they want to, at least they'll hear you out at that point. I'm not yeah. guaranteed you'll make the sale, but they will hear you out. And that right. is, you know, 95% of the battle. And that's really it. Now, this is the part that I wanted to talk about now is is overcoming those objections because this is where we often get tripped up. So, okay, we've got them from our email to, let's say, our sales page or landing page or whatever. And now's the time where we're trying to proposition the sale. Do you think in the copy on that sales page now, you have to find ways of addressing possible objections that you know your readers are thinking as they're looking at the price, as they're looking at what's included? What do you do to, number one, identify what those objections are, and number two, try to find a way to um, remove those objections as people are going through the copywriting on that page? Okay, well, the probably the best thing you can do is to write the page and then find people who have the problem, who don't know you're a doctor. Like try to get, even if you have to be kind of subtle about this and hand it to someone else to hand to someone else, mm-hmm. have them read it and say, what do you think of this? And, and they can't know you wrote it. See, if they know you wrote it, they'll sit there and try to critique it, right? Oh, well, I like the, you know, you know. if they say, well, shoot, I don't believe this. Or, I mean, they'll give you their opinion mm-hmm. or they'll say, how do I get this? And you probably know you're doing it good, but, like that's one of the best ways to tell, like pre-test something. But as far as addressing objections, uh, by creating a vision first, you kind of get rid of the objections because you're not giving them anything to object to. Mm-hmm. When you get to your claims, after that, I mean, you still have to prove things, and that's where you want to start using your credentials and, and case studies. I like to. I mean, I'm not saying you should get bog them down with case studies, but you right. can reference studies done by universities. You can talk about people people who have used whatever it is you're selling before, like testimonials, you want to kind of uh, weave them in, these things in just naturally, just like you would in a conversation. Say, so, you know, this thing has been proven to X, Y, Z, and the university of whatever proved it. And here's somebody who actually used it, and they, and they, they said it helped them too. So now you've proved it two ways. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a little technical here. I'm, I'm trying to avoid getting too technical because I don't want people to get, like, you know, scared of this. I mean, just building a vision first is, is most mm-hmm. people never even do that. So there's the, the, the best way, and I learned this from one of the best copywriters in the world. His name is Paris von Propolis, who actually writes a lot of health stuff. And he's, in fact, he, he's so good at health stuff that people would come to him before their doctor because he's done so much research before. Because in that world, to sell a supplement, you really have to have every, you cannot, the FCC will take you down in a second if you mm-hmm. have one thing. So sometimes people will go to him you know, like, you know what I mean? But um, here's what he told. He goes, you tell a story, and this is a, a structure of persuasion. You tell a story, then you give the mechanism. Now, the mechanism is what makes it work. So you're talking about fertility, right? So you tell a story about someone who's having trouble getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. They did something in the story that now suddenly they got pregnant. And what they did, here's what, here's kind of what they did and how it works. The molecule's smaller. I mean, who knows? It's whatever it makes the thing work. Mm-hmm. So that's the mechanism. And then you go into the hard statistics and the hard data after that. If you do those things, those three things in that exact order, it's just like a, it's a, it's just a solid case you're making. It, it, it gives them no room to object. And uh, it, it works especially well in the health markets because, you know, people are understandably skeptical. I mean, mm-hmm. we all, we all hear these crazy things and everything. And, you know, and, and your natural paths, you already have like the skeptics of the media and everything already working against you. So by doing these things, you're just going to stay a step ahead of all of them. Now, how about the money objection? Because this is a big one. And if somebody's trying to sell something, I find the biggest question that a lot of um, my clients will ask or on a webinar they'll say is, you know, this is all well and good, but I don't know what to price it. I don't know how to price it. I don't know how to overcome that objection of would people actually buy this? And the answer that I typically give is it doesn't really matter how much you are selling it for. It's the um, the value, the perception of all this extra value that they're receiving. Then they would buy it for $2,000 or $20. Like it really doesn't matter. So how do you put that 
um, well into a copy? Like how do you start showing more the value added so then the price is kind of not a an issue? Well, okay, so this goes back to the vision too. If you create the right vision, the, the price is, I mean, within reason, almost irrelevant. I mean, you have to do that. If you do the vision, if I tell the story, here's another example for blood pressure. Anybody listening to this, thing, an email that did very well. And, I, and by the end, when I get there and explain it, you'll probably say it doesn't matter what the price is. Right? So there's this comedian. He, he died in 2011. His name was Patrice O'Neill. And he was he had like 400 blood pressures or blood sugar like when he's in his 20s or something. I don't know what that means, but I think that's pretty bad from my understanding. <laughs> he's a very like obese guy his whole life. You know, he's talking about how having diabetes so young is like it's almost like it ages you, like everything hurts and all that. So anyway, the, the Rolling Stone did a piece of, on him after his death. And here's what happened to this guy. He just woke up one morning, couldn't, and this is the story I told in the email. Mm -hmm. He woke up one morning and couldn't move his legs. Like, he was scared. He's like, I can't move my legs. So he called his girlfriend. She comes over. Later in the day, he can't move his arms. I don't know if it was the same day or a day later. Suddenly, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't even blink. He was literally trapped in his own body. He could not move. His, his, he has a girlfriend, like, who's basically his fiance, and, and, and a child and a mother that all relied on him for income. He had nothing, for I understand, he didn't really have anything set up for them. So he was kind of letting them down in that sense. All because he didn't keep his blood sugar, and he was existing like a starfish, basically. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Like you're conscious, you're conscious, but you can't move. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. You just gotta sit there for the rest of your life. So he died like a few weeks later. But I told that story in an email, and then I segued into what? There are ways of naturally dealing with blood sugar so that this might not. I can't say it won't happen to you, but like to, to help deal with this. Click this link to hear this video. It works. Explains from a, a doctor who developed it. And by the time they click that link, they are ready to, you know, if this is something that worries them and maybe they're obese and maybe they're having these problems, you know, price, price is really never the object. Like, nobody really buys on price. We buy for comfort, quality, and convenience. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can go to the poorest section of town and look in the garbage on Sunday mornings and you're going to see pizza boxes. Buying a pizza is very expensive compared to growing your own wheat and tomato and making it at home. But nobody does it. Like, it's only like pennies in the dollar. So it's not price. Or people, if you went into someone's home, if everybody bought on price, they'd be sitting in lawn chairs and not, like, on a couch, mm -hmm. right? They'd all be buying, driving around in a Yugo, 1985 Yugo or something and not a different car. So it's really not price. It's, it's, it's vision and benefit. If you can build that vision and make the benefits real and believable, and believable is, is key. One believed claim is worth more than a thousand half-believed claims. Mm -hmm. And, and as, a, as doctors, you already have the built-in credibility, like the credential. Yeah. If you, you do those things and they know I can trust you, the price is not that. You know, even for my dog right now, she's got arthritis. I buy this stuff called Canapet, which like uses something from the cannabis. It doesn't get her high or anything, but it uses something from that. It's expensive. It's like $100 for 15 days supply. You think I care? It, that, the page has done such a good job of proving it works. and the, like It's done such a, a solid job. I don't care. Like I, Yeah, I could go buy her some cheap fish oil or something, but I want her to have the best. Mm -hmm. So the beauty is anyone who's going to like a naturopath probably is thinking in that mode like they want the best. So you got that going for you already. You're not like someone who's worried about their $5 copay. You know, they, they're worried about actually getting the problem solved. So you have that going for you. Now it's just a matter of building a vision and, and just proving it. And it, it, it should be, it should make a huge difference. Yeah. And I had so many questions pop in my head and I've lost all of them because again I got sucked into your stories and I just started thinking about the, the starfish guy. <laughs> starfish. Um, is there anything else while I'm trying to reflect on what those questions were, is there anything else that you find are big mistakes that, you know, the copywriters that, because I think you have an online course, yes? Um, I saw a, a print newsletter called Email Players, which just teaches email copywriting. People mm -hmm. are really into email. That, that's my main thing. Mm -hmm. I have other stuff, but that's my main thing. And so what are some of the big pitfalls you see a lot of these people, like the before and afters? Like before, this was what he was writing and got zero conversions. And now, following everything that you've talked about already, this is what he's doing. So what are some of like the, the most common pitfalls you see people doing? Well, for email, and I would say this applies to any kind of content marketing people fall in one of two categories they either only send blatant sales pitches now mm -hmm. i'm a big believer in selling every day but not blatantly where i'm just like i'll tell stories like i was telling you like i don't just 
going, here's my thing. You know? No, it's, let me tell you about something that happened to this person and then kind of segue into it. The other extreme is people who never sell anything. They're scared to sell. They, they think that if they, they, they put a link in there, they're going to get like, you know, people are going to think, oh, you're just trying to sell me, which is kind of like, imagine, it's not really doing people a service. If you don't at least let them know you have a solution for them, you're doing them a disservice. In fact, I think it's your ethical responsibility to at least let them know it exists. Otherwise, it's kind of like the person who has, we'll, we'll use another medical thing. Someone has a really painful urinary tract infection, right? They feel like they're peeing razor blades every day. They are in pain. Mm -hmm. And they, they get the prescription from the doctor. They go down to the pharmacy. And the pharmacist says, oh, no, I can't sell you anything today. This, I'm just going to tell you more about the problem. Uh, come back another day where we're actually, I don't want you to think I'm selling you anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of the mindset, like, especially in the health world. People need what you have. Whatever it is, somebody, like, there's somebody out there in pain. At least let them know it exists. The key is presenting it in a way, like we've been talking about, where you're building a vision first and you're getting to know them and they can trust you first. And, you know, there's another aspect to this I'll just inject in here called infotainment, which is when you combine information with entertainment. Telling stories is natural entertainment. You don't have to be witty or funny or creative, but telling a story is natural entertainment. And people are far more like they, they want to be entertained. They don't want to be educated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we don't go home and read textbooks every day. The average person has watched TV, but they don't want to be entertained. Yeah. So um, I'll give you another example here. And I, I'm, I'm trying not to go off on too many tangents, but I think it's all relevant. So there used to be this series on Netflix about where they would, these, they would interview these various directors who have directed blockbuster movies. And I was like 30 of them or something. One of them was Mel Gibson. Now, he's done a few movies that have like won Oscars and all that, I guess. And there's, he goes, well, here's the three things I want my movies to do. And least the movies that made the most ticket sales and all that. They would first entertain. They didn't start off with it. It has to entertain them. Mm -hmm. And I would say this applies to your marketing, especially in 21st century. Mm -hmm. you got to got to entertain them. And just telling a story is entertaining. Using your personality with just how you talk is a form of entertainment, too, just being a regular person. Two, it, they, it has to educate them. So, for example, let's take the movie Braveheart, right? It entertains you. It's telling a story, a historical story, whether it's accurate or not. It doesn't matter. It's telling you a story that has some historical accuracy. It's educating you. And then he goes, they want, you want to elevate their thinking a little bit. Now, you can't control the third part. If you do the first two things right, you, you may or may not. But, for example, talk, we, talking about the Patrice O'Neill starfish guy, like it, would, it, it could elevate someone's thinking to a different level about this problem. They're like, holy, you know, I didn't mm -hmm, know this. True. this could happen. It, you can do that. And in health, it's so easy. Like it really is. It, like, you guys are the easiest, I think, the easiest thing to sell to. In fact, if people sell to like people with fibro, that, that's got to be the easiest market to sell to right now because there's nobody in it that I know of who's doing it right. So that's just a little something for anyone listening. But that's, if you can do those types of things in your marketing, it just, it will change everything. People will start emailing you back or writing you back or calling you back, thanking you. Thank you for selling me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I get the, I'm not even in the health markets and I get that. So just imagine if you're really solving someone's problems, really solving a pain for something. It, you're just going to be changing lives because you're doing it right and you're thinking of them and you're not selfishly, and I say it's selfish, not letting them know something exists that can help them. I love that. I so love that. And we've been talking a lot about email marketing. Why is email marketing so profitable? Why is it so, like, it, it really is, and I've said this on previous podcasts, I believe it's sort of like the replacement to commercials. Like, everyone is now learning and buying off of emails. And what is it about it that's so important? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. It's funny because you know, people think social media this and all that. Yeah. And, right, like that's, and they'll look at, for example, the 2008 uh, Obama campaign where they did this, they, they raised a lot of money and oh look what he did on social media. But I, I, they did a New York times did a whole story about their email team and they raised way more money with email than anything else, like $600 million or something. So email is definitely, and everybody, and every study I've ever seen who tracks these things, email just blows everything away. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons for this. One reason is it's, you don't, if you do it right, you have less competition, less noise around you. You still have a lot of emails to compete with, but if you're the only one doing what we've been talking about, you're the only one getting read. I can tell you right now, you'll be the only person that they're just deleting everyone else, and they're looking forward to seeing your name in there because they, they just know you're going to give them an adventure. Yeah. Um, so if it's done right, it works very well. If it's done wrong, it, you know that's the people say it doesn't work. Well, you know they're just throwing pitches out there. They're not really having a conversation. 
Um, it's 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 to me it's it's very much like uh, talk radio. And there's this guy who's in the fitness world. His name's Matt Fury, who I learned a lot about from email about. I give him all the credit actually. It wasn't him. I'd be pumping gas out of Chevron right now probably. And he was he 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 was the one that compared it to talk radio. Now talk radio, especially like right wing talk radio like Rush Limbaugh and stuff, is very direct response marketing, which is what we're doing. Friendly. So they do a segment of a show. There's a commercial. And billions of dollars are made on these commercials, and a lot of products are sold because it's a very, very just friendly where to buy. Like, it's just a really good place to buy. Mm -hmm. And emails are the same way. Email is just a talk radio segment. I'm going to talk to you about why this guy, you know, lost his limbs and lost control of his limbs and lived in his own body for several weeks, and, you know, because of blood sugar. It's a segment. You're just going to talk about it. Then you're going to say, you're going to give them a link and say, here's where you can learn more. Here's how you might be able to support your problem. Whatever, whatever the next step is, it's just a very direct response friendly medium, and it's mm -hmm. very, it's very, it's kind of intimate too. I mean, pe people taking you on their phone, not to get too TMI, but people take you in the bathroom with them on their phone, reading your emails. So, I mean, where else can you do that other than direct mail? You're probably not going to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one connection. So, and what do you yeah. think? What do you think about selling then on social media, or you know, a lot of people are doing video ads and YouTube and all that, where do those kind of fall into the type of copywriting we're discussing? Is it still tell a story on social media, link back to the page? Is it try to get everybody off of social media onto your newsletter list? Like where do those platforms come into play? Yeah, that's a great question. In my mind, and you know, I, I contend I'm right about this, so all the people argue with me about this, all roads lead to building your list, right? So. All those things, Facebook, YouTube, we're going to be, I'm going to be testing some YouTube pretty soon, actually. All that is to build my email list so I can send them an email every day selling them what I have. I don't try to sell them on YouTube, off of YouTube. I don't try to sell them anything from social media. Like you said, you want, to, you want to write some kind of ad, whether it be a paid Facebook ad or if you have your own Facebook group, this is even better because Facebook loves that. Where you're trying to get them onto your list, bribe them onto your list with some some kind of valuable report or something or a video, something that they can use like today. Mm -hmm. So in the in the prostate niche, we use you know we give the bribe of the uh, I'm trying to remember the title of it. It's the prostate, the the, the something food that that for prostate and sex that is so good that priests were forbidden to eat it. <laughs> the food, like a food was going to make them not only heal their prostate, but get their sex drive so good that priests were forbidden to eat it at one time. And so that's our bribe to get them in. And it's like three pages, but they can do the one thing in there and they will see instant improvement. Like not mm -hmm. instant, but yeah, I've gotten sure. testimonials from it. It's like drink lemon, uh, onion juice or something like, like that. Like a small win. Pro You're going for a small that's, win. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's not something that's going to cure anything, but God, oh wow, that really worked. Now they want to know what you have. Like, yeah. Oh, that, if that worked, you know, but it's all about getting them on the list and, you know, they all roads lead to list. And this is what's what people kind of do wrong is they'll have a website and it's full of like social media share buttons, which isn't like bad, mm -hmm. but I don't want anything competing with that opt-in form. <laughs> like it's like, I am paranoid about it. I want everything leading to the opt-in. Once they opt-in, I don't even care if they come to my site again, because I'm, now I have them. Right. Once you have that list, it, you have them. And some people... Some people like Dan Kennedy, if anyone knows him, he'll use like a, a term that kind of offends some people. He calls it a herd. You've got them in a herd, and they'll come when called. You know, <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but that is kind of, it, it, I'm not saying people are herd, but that's his analogy. But it's kind of what it is. You have them in one spot. You send them an offer. If it's a good offer that can help them that they want, they're going to buy. Yeah. But you have them in one spot. And social media, you're competing with everybody. Yeah. So just get them off social media into your list. Now you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. And you know what? I've been doing a lot of training and a lot of learning about that. And that is the one thing that I was doing wrong is I was using social media as a platform to sell. And it is just not the right thing to do. It's a great way to remind people, but to use it to, that was like my main way of getting people onto my programs or whatever. And I realized that I was not doing that very well. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, you can do it, but it's like, it's not going to work nearly as well as having them on an email list. If you do email right. And so you know, and it's a very simple thing. I'm a very much a direct response marketing purist. And to me, it's just all about building the list first. In fact, I've, I've said this and Scott me like people argue with me. The whole purpose of a website is to build a list. Some people say, well, it's to brand myself. No, those are fine. You, you want to do those things and to prove your case and to give your credentials. But those things don't, those things serve to build your list. You're not building a list to serve those things. Mm -hmm. So do all that stuff. 
But the purpose ultimately, unless you're Coca-Cola or some big corporation that doesn't build a list, for us little people, it's to build a list. And yeah. if you think of your website as just a way to build a list, a lot of things, you'll start doing a lot of things right that maybe you weren't doing right before. I love that. I love everything that you've said. It's so clear. It's so easy. I've been, as I said, 100% engaged in listening to all of your stories, and I'm going to remember the stories because that's the other thing that's wonderful about them is they're memorable. People don't remember the facts. They don't remember the stats. They don't remember, you know, the medical stuff. They remember, oh, did you hear about that guy that became a starfish? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah I mean, it's, it, and, you know, the, and the more scary the story, the better – yeah, and you're not trying to like manipulate them. You just no. literally said this could happen. Like, I don't want terp surgery. <laughs> I hear it. It's that, you know. So, I keep using terp. Yeah, you know, sometimes it makes people squirm when I start talking. But it, it's true. It's like the more you can just build a vision of a problem or a pain, the better off you're serving them. The better your sales are going to be. Everybody wins. I love it. If people wanted to get in touch with you personally or learn more about you or anything, what are some of the best ways for them to do that? Best way is just to go to bensettle.com. And if you, you don't have to opt in, but if you give me your email address, I'll send you the first issue of my email players newsletter, which I charge $97 a month for. It's a very retail, that's what it retails for. As a PDF, it's a physical newsletter, but I'll send a PDF to the first issue. There's 24 ways in there to start making more sales with your emails like right away. It's a no brainer to try it out and see if you want to stick around. Um, if you go into the site, I have about 2000 pages of blog posts, I don't know. 100 hours of audio, can have all these podcasts and stuff on there. It's all free. So uh, that's bensettle.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben, for being on the show today and being so engaging and making copywriting, again, so much easier because this is scary. This is all part of, I think, a huge, valuable piece of running a business and being successful in business, especially with leveraging the internet as another stream to grow your business and raise some extra revenue. So thank you again so much. Oh, thank you for having me. It's fun. Thank you. Good. So I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was really, really cool. That entire show, I absolutely love talking to him. As I said, even on the interview, you know, a lot of those stories he was telling just, you know, that those they were so memorable. So my encouragement to you is to go back and look at your blog posts, look at how you're writing your emails, look at what's on your sales pages, look at how you're engaging with your group on social media and see if you're, you know, engaging them enough with entertainment. Are you, you know, talking to them and telling them stories and there's nothing to prevent us as practitioners to share the wins that we're having with our patients without giving away way anything personal that would link them right back to the person that you're talking about it's ways of emphasizing what our strengths are and it is what's going to be the most memorable to people that are on the fence that are wanting to be with you they just haven't you know taken action and you give them a story about how you change this person's life and they think of themselves and say oh my goodness that could be me they will book in with you. So it is really a skill uh, that I would strongly encourage everyone to become as adept with as possible. And so this is what I'm I'm asking you. This is what I'm offering to you uh, listening on the show is I don't want you to be that person that listened to this entire episode and you're inspired and you're engaged and then you just don't do anything with the information. You just keep you know, pushing the sales or not selling at all because you're afraid to and wondering why it's hard for you to have any monthly growth in your business or annual growth or, you know, be able to pay off some of the expenses that you have because you're just not running your business like a business person. I want you guys to be profitable. Therefore, the Profitable Practice Podcast. So anyone, if you are listening to this and you know you want to take action, you're afraid of taking that first step, you need the extra accountability or the handholding, I want you to email me at info at themaximmovement.com. That's going directly to me. And you and I can set up a time where we chat over Skype or over the phone, or if you live close, we can even meet in person. And we will break down some of those areas where copywriting is not working for you. We'll work it out however long it takes and we'll get you moving forward and we'll see those tremendous results start happening for you. 
you know, only, you know, a couple percent of you that are listening to this are going to take me up on this. So be one of those, you know, A++ students and email me directly, info at the and let's start making some massive transformations in your business. Copywriting is probably one of the most important ones. So definitely reach out to me, email me directly, and we'll set that call up. If you have other topics that you'd like me to cover, if there's anything that you find that you're missing in your business that I can go over, if you have a question for me, let me know and I will make a show based around that. But otherwise, guys, good luck with your copywriting. Take massive, massive action because it will be game changing in your business. I'm Andrea Maxim and I'm out.